This then is the truth about the Spanish Inquisition. How did it become? Uh, uh, did it gain so different an image? Uh, did it become uh, uh, almost a symbol and a byword for evil, as it has been seen uh, by so many, particularly in the English-speaking world, uh, over the past uh, 200 years? It has never been so regarded in Spain, though there have been severe critics of the Inquisition in recent times, there have always been defenders along the lines and making the kind of case that I have here today. But in the English-speaking world, you rarely hear anything good said, any defense made of the Inquisition. Why is that? The reasons go far back into history, to the great struggle uh, of England and the Netherlands against Spain during the late 16th century, the reign of Philip II, the time of the Spanish Armada, the time of the Dutch revolt against Spain. And English and the Dutch writers making their case against Spain uh, fastened on the worst reports and rumors about the Inquisition, uh, used uh, the uh, uh, reports of uh, uh, disloyal persons uh, who had uh, betrayed King Philip II and had fled from the country and spread ugly stories about him and about the country and about the Inquisition. These were accepted uh, and they were spread by skillful propagandists. In the end, the Dutch won their war for independence and the English defeated the Spanish Armada. Uh, and therefore, uh, they uh, were able to maintain and extend their propaganda war against Spain. Uh, so the Inquisition gained uh, this uh, image among many people uh, in the English-speaking world of a kind of embodiment of evil. Later on, around the end of the 18th century, around the year 1800, a man named Llorente, uh, who had worked for the Inquisition, but had been accused of uh, uh, pilfering funds, of embezzlement, as we would call it today, uh, from the Inquisition's treasury, escaped, went to England, uh, and wrote what he called a history of the Inquisition, uh, violently hostile and uh, um, indicating that enormous numbers of people had, been, people had been killed by the Inquisition down through the centuries. Statements which uh, the examination of the actual records of the Inquisition and of the uh, uh, state in Spain have simply not borne out. Llorente is extraordinarily inaccurate. Even historians very critical of the Inquisition no longer come close to accepting Llorente's figures. Uh, so uh, these distortions by Llorente added to the black legend of the Inquisition. Uh, and uh, then, uh, given the existence of that, uh, you had during the 19th century uh, some uh, widely read works of literature uh, which f fastened upon people's minds the image of the Inquisition as a kind of incarnation of evil. The most famous was the short story by Edgar Allan Poe entitled The Pit and the pendulum, uh, which describes in unforgettable fashion the Spanish inquisitors uh, uh, torturing someone by uh, uh, tying him below a pendulum with a sword on the end of it that keeps swinging lower and lower and lower until it's going to cut him in, in two, and in that way terrifying him into uh, uh, making his confession. Now, torture is a terrible thing. It should not have been done by the Inquisition, but it was rarely done, and it was certainly never done in that way. Edgar Allan Poe did, based his story purely on on his own somewhat diseased imagination uh, rather than any kind of historical research. Then the famous Russian writer Dostoevsky uh, also wrote a novel about uh, uh, a grand inquisitor, similarly uh, without any real historical foundation, but which had a great deal of influence. <coughs> so uh, the um, aspects of the Inquisition, uh, which certainly are open to criticism, which we cannot accept today, the use of torture and the burning at the stake of those found twice guilty uh, of false profession of Christianity. Uh, the, this is all most people know about the Inquisition, uh, whereas in fact, it deserves to be judged on its, uh, the totality of its uh, uh, nature and its effect in Spain uh, and the fact that torture and uh, uh, a very painful execution were used uh, is not, as I said earlier, unique to the Inquisition. This was characteristic of uh, the, uh, uh, the way that uh, penalties were inflicted and the way the questioning was conducted sometimes in most European countries of the age. 
uh, it um, uh, some ages are uh, more sensitive to certain moral evils than others. Uh, we live in an age where the very thought of torture and burning at the stake are uh, horrible. We, we shrink from them. We wonder how any uh, person could possibly have done this. And yet, we live in an age where a million and a half unborn innocent babies are torn from their mother's wombs and killed every year, and we think nothing of it. Uh, a century or two or five from now, people will say, how could they have stood by and allowed this to happen? Uh, so uh, uh, we have these immoral insensitivities in every age, but that's not what the Inquisition should be judged on. It should be judged on uh, the basic fairness of its procedures, the number of people that it protected and cleared, like St. Ignatius and St. Teresa, the troubles that it spared Spain, and the uh, very real dangers that it rooted out. An overall balanced picture of the Inquisition, uh, taking all of these matters into account, is the only way uh, to give it a proper historical judgment and to do justice uh, to not only uh, the men who worked for, as they understood it, the good of the faith, uh, but to Queen Isabel, the great and holy queen who founded the Inquisition and surely would never have done so had it been the evil uh, monster that is represented in legend.